first day of NBA free agency is in the books, and as expected, it was a very busy one. Uh, over $1.5 billion in contracts were signed uh, within about 12 hours, which actually is a little bit less than the 2021 free agency period, if you can believe it. But there were a lot of big moves, and a lot of them were teams like overpaying a little bit to keep certain players on the roster. Uh, Orlando, for instance, they end up paying Gary Harris two years, $26 million to keep him. Mo Bamba gets two years, $21 million to stay with the team. Um, inconsequential, but like... It felt like Mo Bamba had fell, fallen out of rotation before. This is probably something to do with the team moving on uh, from Steve Clifford as the coach, who just did not seem to enjoy playing Mo Bamba. Um, he'll become one of the... I mean, hopefully he'll become one of the rotation players behind Wendell Carter, the two Wagners. Um, even if the team decides to run small with um, Paulo Bancaro, the number one overall pick, playing four or small ball five, who knows? But... They lock up both of those players, kind of show a little bit of a plan going on. Um, another team overpaying to keep their guy is the Detroit Pistons, who surprisingly gave Marvin Bagley a three-year, $37 million extension after only seeing him in about 19 games after trading for him uh, with the Kings last year. So, must have really liked what they saw. It seems like the Pistons have a really good... Um, like plan in place a good nucleus that they're growing and expanding and Bagley is going to get the chance to shine alongside Jalen Duran so I can see why they would want to do that they they're able to re-sign him on a bargain they're able to you know hope he continues that upward trend with his defense with his rim running alongside Cade Cunningham and why not I mean he's a former number two overall pick you gotta you gotta take the chance if you can sign a number two overall pick um for three years, $37 million. You might as well, because you never know if it's going to pan out. Um, speaking of signing a number two overall pick, so I did two videos earlier. One was all about the Kevin Durant trade request and potential landing spots. The second was about three Supermax contracts that were agreed to within the first hour of free agency. We did actually get two more of those. The first is John Morant who signs a four-year extension to stay with the Memphis Grizzlies uh, that's rumored to be up upwards worth about $224 million. Now, I'm sure that's a lot of incentives, types of things like that, but $224 million, he's barely 23 years old, that Grizzlies team is on the rise. Can't really argue with, with locking him down and making sure that he's the cornerstone of the franchise for years to come. Uh, other sad news about the Grizzlies that does not have to do with free agency and the departure of Kyle Anderson is the fact that it came out today as well in the middle of all these signings and all of this news. Jaron Jackson Jr. suffered a broken foot and is going to be out four to six months, uh, which is terrible for quite a few reasons. One being uh, that he is a force when he plays alongside Ja. He stretches the court in a way that the other centers on the roster just can't. And he gives the Grizzlies that edge when they go small with him at the five that has been so successful since they drafted Ja and brought him into the league. That's what helped them go on that run last season, finish with one of the best records in the league, make it to the second round of the playoffs. And the other thing is Jaron Jackson Jr. was probably the cornerstone in a trade, a potential trade for Kevin Durant if the Grizzlies were going to uh, kick the tires on that. Because the, the two most likely trade packages that I was reading about uh, were centered. One was centered around Desmond Bain. One was centered around Jaron Jackson. Little bit of player overlap uh, between Jaron Jackson and Kevin Durant. Plus, Desmond Bain's on that rookie deal still. I think he's only making like one or two million dollars. So, he's the value. So, you would want to keep him in a trade. Uh, so, probably probably puts the chances of a of a jaw kd team up uh close to next to nothing which is unfortunate uh four to six months foot injuries can be terrible though so the grizzlies have been super cautious before specifically with injuries to jaron jackson jr so i would imagine it's probably going to be closer to the six month side of things for recovery which is just a bummer because when healthy and on the court he is an incredibly dynamic and fun to watch player 
<clears throat> uh, when it comes to, to teams making big deals, though, or well, I guess I should say first, the Knicks get their man, Jalen Brunson, four years, $104 million. Basically, as soon as free agency hit, <clears throat> that deal was agreed to, which also, I don't, like, is tampering a thing anymore? Because the Bulls got punished for tampering with Lonzo Ball last year. The Bucks lost out on um, Bogdan Bogdanovich because of tampering. But, like, 3 o'clock hit, and Shams and Woj just emptied the drafts. It was, like, eight notifications in a span of, like, 30 seconds. So, I don't know if this, like, legal tampering period or what. Like, it, it's kind of a joke. I'd be shocked if nothing came out of all of these deals being announced right at three. Uh, the Knicks had been courting Jalen Brunson for days now. They cleared out all sorts of space. Four years, $104 million. That's a big loss for Dallas. It's an overpay for New York, but if they like him that much and they believe in him that much with that core of Randall, R.J. Barrett... Uh, we'll be topping Emmanuel quickly. Um, it'll be interesting to see because Tom Thibodeau is still the coach. So it's going to be a really unique blend of uh, personalities. But the, the team that I actually really um, enjoyed... Actually, you know what? I didn't talk about the other Supermax. So there was John Morant's Supermax, and then there is one more Supermax that was agreed to. It was kind of surprising, but Carl Anthony Towns signs a Supermax with Minnesota to stay for four years, $224 million dollars. And it's a, it's a notable extension, not just because um, it probably guarantees the Cat will be there for uh, the, long, the long term. Uh, former number one overall pick has signed a couple deals already, so this isn't the first extension or anything like that. But the team seemed to be kind of trending towards this weird, like, option A, option B type decision. Where, like, do we stay with, with Cat and we keep D'Lo and, and keep running it back? And then, like, the emergence of Anthony Edwards has kind of forced everyone's hand. Where it's like, is the Timberwolves team, are they good enough right now with this construct to maximize Anthony Edwards? So it became, like, two schools of thought. Like, do we get rid of Cat and D'Lo and just build around Ant? Or do we try to make it work? And it seems at least, like, Minnesota in the moment is going to try to make it work. Um, D'Angelo Russell's an expiring contract in 2023, so I don't think he's out of the woods on potential trade talks, but who knows. Um, but the cool thing about his Supermax is his agent actually also represents Devin Booker, who signed a Supermax today, and her name is Jessica Holtz, and she is the first woman to negotiate a max deal in the NBA in history, and she did two Supermax deals on the same day. That's a huge achievement in um, sports management and agency. And that's just a cool note that Woj tweeted out that um, happened to be the first time a woman had signed a Max deal for a player. And let alone two Supermax deals for two best friends. So kind of a cool story. Uh, but the team that I like the most as far as what they've done so far has to be the Portland Trailblazers. Because the Trailblazers, last week they went out and they traded like next to nothing for Jeremy Grant, who in a vacuum that was a smart move anyways, just because it didn't take much to get him and he instantly improves that that wing defense and provides a, a realistic scoring option alongside Dame. But then today, they re-sign Anthony Simons for four years, $100 million, probably an overpay, but keeping him there after the emergence that he had with Dame out most of this last season and the team trading CJ McCollum, Anthony Simons really stepped up as a lead guard, as a second option next to CJ, and keeping him was probably a priority because they have seen him grow, basically, as the, uh, as the years have gone on. So being able to pair him with Dame, use him to run the uh, backup spot, that's a huge help. Uh, then, near the end of the night, one of the last big updates that comes through is that the Blazers have agreed to a three-year deal with Gary Payton II, NBA champion Gary Payton II, three years, $28 million on a mid-level exception deal, basically, um, which priced out the Warriors, which tells you how strapped for cash they're going to be. Um, but this is like the perfect move for Portland. I had wanted Portland to get Lou Dort, who was actually re-signed by the Thunder on a four, four year, um, $85 million contract, which is a little bit of an overpay there too. But what he brings that team is kind of in invaluable. Like you can't measure it. 
So it makes sense. So to me, Gary Payton the second is like the second best choice for this Blazers team specifically because he brings the intangibles, he brings the edge, he brings the defense, he brings the hustle and the effort, and I think he's going to fit right in. I think that that's the perfect spot for him. You think about that defense now, and it's going to be Josh Hart, Jeremy Grant, Gary Payton the second on the perimeter. That is a formidable defense. I mean, we'll see what they do with the, the forward and the wing spot, or the forward and the center spots. Uh, if they're done making moves, if they still have stuff in, in the works. But just those players right there elevates this team more than I would have expected it to happen. Uh, just in two signings and a trade. Like, I'm, I'm very impressed with what the Blazers have been doing so far. And I think um, if Dame is helping make these choices, he might be the best player GM right now. Uh, he might be taking the GM's title. Which, speaking of the Lakers... They lose Malik Monk um, to the Kings. They sign him. The Kings sign him away for a two-year, nineteen million dollar deal. But Rich Paul, like NBA agent Thanos, just pulls another Infinity Stone out of the gauntlet and brings in Lonnie Walker the fourth. The Spurs rescinded his restricted free agency offer a couple days ago, and today he pays them back by signing with the Lakers for a one-year mid-level exception which is stunning. It's it's perfectly balanced, as all things should be. A soul for a soul there. Uh, so he joins the Lakers, who made a decided effort to get uh, younger after last year. They went kind of signing vet minimum guys. So they get Lonnie Walker the fourth. They get Troy Brown Jr. on a vet minimum. And they also sign Juan Toscano Anderson, NBA champion Juan Toscano Anderson, who if he gets minutes really like that signing as well because he's another player who in his time in Golden State really endeared himself to fans with hard play, hustle plays, uh, unwillingness to give up on plays, and I think it's going to be, um, not even if he's not a big factor on court, he's going to be a great chemistry guy to have there. Uh, and then the last team really that did um, any big splashes were Daryl Morey and the Philadelphia 76ers who decided to basically call every single former Rocket and see if they answered um, and then just try to get them to join Philly. James Harden opted out. They're still working on his deal. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that, I'm sure, because they've said he wants to take a team-friendly deal right now, a short-term deal to kind of rehab his value and help the team with flexibility. We'll see what those numbers actually look like when it's all said and done. But for now, the 76ers get Dan Wallhouse Jr. on a two-year, $8.5 million deal. Former Rocket, who played with Harden, understands the spacing, can hit those catch-and-shoot threes. So, need that. They also signed Trevlin Queen, who actually did not play for the Rockets under Maury with James Harden, but played for the Rockets last season. And the big one, they bring in... P.J. Tucker on a three-year, $33 million deal that is fully guaranteed, which is a huge win for P.J. He goes from Milwaukee winning a championship to Miami, giving them another edge. If you could imagine Heat culture needing another edge. And now he's going to a 76ers team that is desperately in need of the intangibles that he brings to a team and a locker room. So... I understand Daryl being like, you know what, I'm just going to go go get my guys. I'm going to go get what I know. I'm going to go get the players that I know and what they're giving me. Um, we'll see what happens with James Harden and what that deal looks like before you're really able to see, you know, if the, the 76ers just kind of penciled themselves in as Eastern Conference Rockets with these signings. Um, I don't think so. I think that these are, these are pretty good team-friendly deals. And bringing someone like P.J. Tucker in, like I just said, like you can't, that's an Im, that's an immeasurably valuable thing to have a player like that that can bring that atmosphere to your team that has struggled at times with that. Uh, it's very important. And so I think paying him that, fully guaranteeing that money, making sure you bring him in um, is going to go a long way for helping the makeup of that team. <laughs> and speaking of James Harden's old team, the Brooklyn Nets, they had a bit of a busy day today with Kevin Durant requesting a trade. Everything seemingly going to hell. And then, out of the ashes, they trade a first-round pick to the Jazz to get Royce O'Neal. Um, not bad. 
Uh, looks a lot different <laughs> without KD or Kyrie on the roster, that's for sure. But in a vacuum as a move, not bad. Uh, then we go to uh, Patty Mills, who opted out of a $6 million player option the other day to re-sign with the team for two years, $14.5 million. So he gets a little bit of a pay grade, uh, pay raise, I should say. He's going to probably be the lead guard in Brooklyn, depending on what they get back for uh, KD or Kyrie. Um, when, if those trades happen, who knows. And then lastly, they decided to bring back Nick Claxton on a two-year, $20 million deal. He is absolutely worth every penny of that. He's a good, strong, young center. He's a smart rebounder. He is learning still a bit when it comes to uh, defense, but offensively, he's that rim running option that you're looking for that can absolutely hammer teams on the offensive glass with energy and hustle. Uh, so this is a smart one. So the Nets kind of keep this weird nucleus intact. So if they trade Durant and Kyrie for you know, whatever they're going to get and keep Ben Simmons. Uh, they have a nice little defensive unit here with Royce O'Neal, Ben Simmons, Patty Mills, Nick Claxton, but that's obviously not going to be enough. Uh, we'll see what happens with that, but the fact that the Nets are staying um, active and aggressive in free agency, especially with retaining their, their players, tells me that they have faith in how they're going to navigate this <laughs> this giant situation that is basically blowing up the team. Uh, three years after signing Kyrie and KD. So I think that's everything. Uh, Victor Oladipo is going to stay in Miami on a one-year $11 million prove-it deal, which pretty good deal for the Heat. He was absolutely one of their best players at times throughout the playoff run. There were a couple games where he looked like the only player that had showed up for the team. And that's coming off of a lot of serious injuries. So as he continues to get better, that contract is going to look like a steal. And it also gives them some potential leverage in a trade with another team that's looking to maybe sign him long term. So really smart, shrewd move by the Heat, which kind of goes without saying. That's about all they did, though. So we'll see if that's like the precursor to something else. And then Andre Drummond to the Bulls, two years, six million. That's one thing is they haven't announced anything with Zach Levine yet. He remains probably the biggest free agent yet to sign. Um, all signs pointed to him staying with the Bulls in recent days. And then he was supposed to have a meeting today, I thought, and just nothing came out about it. And his team hasn't said anything and the Bulls haven't said anything. I don't know if this is something where like they're going to try to put together something to go after KD or what this could be, but uh, Zach Levine, I expect news on that one probably pretty soon because he is one of those major pieces. And when he gets signed, I think you'll probably start to see some of those other guys um, get signed and kind of see things get a little clearer for their options as well. So we'll see. Uh, like I said, this was just day one. Things went absolutely crazy. Uh, if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments what your favorite signing was or what your team did or what you want to see your team do. Let me know. I uh, hope you enjoyed the day. We will be back tomorrow for day two. Thank you. and.